So for lesson three, we're going to take a look at a few more things with feature recognition. Uh, and we're also going to talk about going through some of the setup that will benefit us down the road when we start applying uh, automation rules or machining, machining processes. So if you have went through lesson one, lesson two, you'll, we're sort of going to start where the parts already imported into a PPR. We have our manufacturing cell. Uh, we have our manufacturing product. And we're now going to work on uh, creating a machine. Uh, I think we'll create one tool for this example because our focus is going to be on feature recognition. We'll create some stock and then, and then we'll move forward. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, though, is this part is coming from SolidWorks. You'll notice that we have a plane or a sketch piece of geometry out here. You can use some of those bounding box pieces of geometry for rough stock, which you'll see here in a little bit. To where if I actually have this in a vise, you'll see that I have some clearance here at the bottom. Um, it, it's going to come in handy, so you can use some reference geometry from the CAD system to actually automate some of the stock creation. So like previous examples, we're just going to create a generic machine. Now I can import these because once I create these, these actually show up in the database, so that way I can reuse them. But for this example, our focus is just generating a quick machine and then getting to the actual features and the recognition of that and how we're going to use that today. So I'll go through and I'll create a quick rough stock. We'll put that in our manufacturing product. We'll click the body. And you'll notice because I have that geometry on the outside, it's going to automatically make the bounding box the size of the largest piece of geometry. So by using that plane here, I'm, I'm creating a little bit bigger bounding box that's more of a stock value. And then I'm also putting in clearance below it. So if I was using soft jaws or something like that, everything's going to clear. So I'll just select OK. So our next step is to edit the operation and then define the stock and define the part like we've done in lesson one and lesson two. Again, I'll use my action pad to hide the part or to hide the stock, making it easier to select the part. And in this one, we'll go through two and we'll adjust the coordinate system. We'll put it to the center of the block. We'll put in our work offsets that we're going to use. And in this one, I'm actually going to rename it <clears throat> more just to show the example of how it works. One thing we can do too is I'll change my X direction uh, to match the edge of the stock. And we'll select OK. And now we have our work offset in the middle of the block. And then it's at the top center. We have G54. All of those things are defined. So I'm going to go ahead and save it quick. And now we're going to take a look at feature recognition. And then we're also going to uh, take a look at you uh, creating a tool here in a little bit. So let's start first with feature recognition. So I'm going to go to my action pad. I'm going to hide the stock so that way it's easier to see the part. And then we're going to come down to axial machining and we're going to use global feature recognition this time. Now there's a couple things about global feature recognition that we'll talk about. And, and this is more of my preference on how I use it. Uh, you can use it any way that you want. But the way that it goes through and finds features is sort of through this list how it's sorted. So if you pick holes here, it'll automatically go find all the holes and then it'll come back and then find any pockets or steps. Now with this pocket the way that it's set, the way this is actually designed is it can be a counterbore. So you could use a counterbore tool and, and do that in one operation. For our example, I want to do that as an actual open pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and find the features first. And then I'll come back and I'll assign the holes second. Uh, if I do the hole first, then it, it will not create a open pocket here because it sees that that, that geometry is already being machined. So part of the automation that happens with feature recognition is, is it looks and says, hey, is there another feature already taking advantage of, of this geometry? And if the answer is yes, then it just moves on past to something else. So I'm going to go through and I'm just, I don't know what pockets or steps are here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick these options. I'm going to pick the body. Now, if I wanted to say, hey, I only want you to find features from this machining direction, I can go through and then define uh, machining direction here. Um, for this example, I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to let feature recognition go through and find its thing. 
Now it's going to come back and say, hey, there was a couple features in there that I, I didn't recognize. But if I look at my list here, you'll see that I have some complex steps. I have some complex pockets. Now, if I look at this step, what's sort of cool about this is in this step, instead of just picking edges and boundaries, we're also it's also using feature recognition to find faces and adjacent techno adjacent components. And then on the guide area that's here, I have the ability if I wanted that to be swapped to like an open profile, I can swap that to be closed or open and you can change any of this on the fly. But once I have the machining areas found, I'm not done yet. I can come back now and say, hey, I want you to do an automatic hole search. And it's going to go through and look at all the holes on the part. I'll hit create. And it's going to go through and automatically create the machining axial features. OK, and these MAFs are machining axial features. Um, they'll become more important here in a little bit. But just to give you an idea, I can go through and I can find these in any given process that I want. I can also if we're talking generating features, I can create prismatic machining areas at any given time also. So let's say I want to create one to machine this boss here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some geometry and create a guide. So we'll go here, run it up to that angle. Zoom in just a little bit. And there's different settings you can set to get this to go around. I have mine set to like the, the basic steps to where it actually will go through and find up to a certain angle. And then it, it allows me to define an input. So instead of going and finding a chain that may not make sense, I get a little bit of interaction and I can determine how I want that to be. Now on this one, I want to swap the hardness because I want that to go to the outside. We'll say we're going to start there. And then in the middle, I'm going to have an island. When I swap hardness, it creates those uh, construction geometry, just like you'd see in SolidWorks or SolidWorks Cam. And when I hit OK, that's now going to be a machining area that I can actually use later on down the road. So whether I use automatic to find the pockets and the holes, or I use interactive, this list becomes the same. It's just a matter of how much interaction I want to have as a user. So with that said, we have some features created. Now we're going to jump back and we're actually going to create a quick tool and we're going to use the same tool for all of this. Uh, actually, one thing before I go to that, um, one thing you can do too is you can do an automatic pattern creation. So I can select geometry after it's been found and say, hey, you know, I, for face, body, axial feature, I want you to go identify and create a pattern for me. And what it'll do is it'll automatically look and then say, hey, now these are all the same and it creates it as one pattern. So if you have geometry that is similar, I can have it go find those as patterns, which then makes selection easier. Uh, you can also do pattern creation uh, outside of Axial. You could do it for faces or bodies if you wanted to as well. So just FYI, instead of manually selecting all the holes, I can have it go find all the patterns for me that match. But with that said, we're going to go back and we're going to do resource creation and we're just going to create a real simple end mill here, just like we've done before. So I'm going to make it a flat end mill, no radius on the end. Um, we'll do 0.125 inches. Uh, it can be, you know, anything similar to that from a metric conversion. And I'm going to do tool 10. Eighth flat end. And lesson three, because again, I want to make sure that in the future, when I start using my production tooling, um, I have a designation that this was used in lesson three. None of the rest of this geometry has been defined. I'm just looking at the diameter here for the lesson. So with that, we have our tool. So if I look here, I have my tool 10 eighth inch flat end right here. Now we're going to go through and we're going to start creating the operations based off those features that were found. So I'm going to go to my prismatic machining. I'm going to pick on pocket. I'm going to start, I'll just pick on the part. And it's going to ask me to select a tool. So I'm going to pick a tool, the eighth inch. And then from the tree, 
here, I'm going to pick, I'm going to, we'll just start with the complex step. I'll just work my way down. Now, when I pick the complex step, all those operations are automatically defined. All the geometries filled out, the, the offset on boundaries. You'll see that it automatically sees that that's an open profile for me. I don't have to go swap the hardness. Uh, I can make a name change here. Complex step one. And then if I wanted to add any of my approach, retract, let's say I just want to do axials here. Um, and I'll just pick to a plane. And then in this edit, I can say, hey, I want to retract to that distance for whatever reason, right? And we'll hit OK. And I've set that up for the first operation. So we'll select OK. And if I were to generate the toolpath, you'll see that I have the toolpath generated. Now, since I've set my lead in, lead out, if I were to set my feeds and speeds and step over and all of those things, then what I do next is going to automatically carry over to each one. So once I have the first complex step, I'm going to click my pocketing. It's not going to ask for a tool because I selected in the tree. It's just going to say, hey, which feature do you want to use? I'll just do complex. Step two, select OK. And then if I were to generate this, you can see all those rules now apply to that. So what I'm going to do now is talk a little less and just go through the next few steps, which is I click the geometry, click the part. Give it a name. And we'll just go through this until we have all the pockets. Now, there are, in upcoming lessons, there are ways where I can automate this portion of it as well. Um, but for right now, it's just more the understanding that if the features are defined, it makes it easier to program um, the operations. So we have our pocket. One more pocket, and then we have the one that we manually generated as well. So we'll go to our last one for the pocket. And then we'll do the one that we manually created, which was to clean off the island around the top. So we'll do that one. And again, just for like lesson two, you can do facing, you can do open pocket um, using the pocketing option. So I'm just going to pick my prismatic machining area. Um, and you don't have to assign a name to these. I'm just doing it so that way in the history here, or when I look at the operation tree, I can see how they all are. When I'm done, I'll shift select, let it generate all the tool paths. And now when we look at this, we have the operations that we want. And all the step overs and everything are all set to be the same. So once we have that, I'll do a quick save. And then we'll look at what happens if I go through this process and I get to this point and then it's like, oh, well, I wanted to change something that is generic to all these operations. What you can do is you can shift select all of them. And then if you go to edit operations, it'll actually allow you to make some edits that would apply to all operations um, at one time. So now that I'm looking here, I can come back and I can say, well, instead of outward helical, um, let's not do outward he helical, let's change our diameter ratio to 30% step over, and then we'll do number of levels will be fine. And then in our 
approach and retract. We'll change those to ramping. Select OK. And then we'll come back and we'll generate the operations. So I have the option to make bulk edits to these all at once. You'll see that my percentage step over has changed. And now I'm actually ramping into the part uh, where it's applicable. So you can make bulk edits by doing shift select and edit operations, or I can control pick different ones and edit operations. Um, but you don't have to go back and manually make a change for each one. So if you were to start going through a process of creating a bunch of features, and then you're like, oh, I forgot for this specific machine or this process, I want to change, you know, how it's going to behave. I don't have to go through and double click on each one to open each one up and make the same change. If it's generic in nature between all the operations, I have the ability to make that edit. So it, that is just another method here. So the last thing we're going to take a look at is our axial machining. And we're going to do circular milling on this one. So I'm just going to click circular milling. Uh, we're not going to load a drill in for this example. We're just going to circular pocket all those holes. Now it's asking for uh, what I want to machine. So I'm going to come up here. For the holes, we'll come back. We'll click our pattern. And you can see now the holes are added. If I wanted to manually do it, I can erase that. I can come back and I can pick the individual holes here if I wanted to. So even if I were to create a pattern, if I decide, hey, I want to do these in a different way, I can go ahead and do that. It's really up to me. Um, there is a, a depth that automatically gets put on this. I can also pick an optional part surface, a check, or if I just want to make sure that they all go to a certain depth, like let's say I want it to go all the way through the material, I can set that whole bottom here. And then for strategy, you know, how do I want it to behave? We'll do helical. Uh, we won't worry about a breakthrough amount on this one. We have some predefined, select OK. And now we have a circular milling operation here. So we'll compute the toolpath. With the circular milling done, one last thing we'll talk about in this lesson is uh, some of the app options. So if I look over here, uh, I have app options. If you remember from previous lessons, if I go to tools, I can turn that on and off right here from the tools. Uh, but there's actually an area here for configure panels. And if I turn on configure panels, I have the ability to turn on different panels that show up over here on the left. Um, in some of those, depending upon what roles you have uh, from Delmia, you have options to show different things. So in some of the more advanced roles, you have the ability to show your NC program over here in the window. Uh, you can also show home positions, profiles, uh, if you want to see simulation states. So just keep in mind that <clears throat> you have these standard panels here, but there are also other ones that you can turn on and off and they happen to just be in this area. You can also always refresh the panels here or hide and show panels. Uh, there's a bunch of different settings that go and in, go into different things here. Uh, but just keep in mind that there's lots of options that allow this experience to be different over here on the left. And with that, that concludes lesson three.